Henry Cavill. Born. May 5, 1983, Jersey, Channel Islands. Birth name. Henry William Dalgliesh Cavill. Nicknames. Hank Henner's Most Dashing Duke. Height. 6 foot 1, 1 1.85 m. Henry William Dalgliesh Cavill was born on the Bailiwick of Jersey, a British Crown dependency in the Channel Islands. His mother, Marianne Dalgliesh, a housewife, was also born on Jersey and is of Irish, Scottish, and English ancestry. Henry's father, Colin Richard Cavill, a stockbroker, is of English origin, born in Chester, England. Henry is the second youngest son, with four brothers. He was privately educated at St. Michael's Preparatory School in St. Saviour. Jersey before attending Stowe School in Buckinghamshire, England. His interest in acting started at an early age, with school play renditions of Shakespeare's, A Midsummer Night's Dream, and Sunny Latiri in Greece. He also starred and directed Shakespeare's Hamlet in the BBC documentary, 40 Minutes. It was at age 17, when Henry was discovered by casting directors at school, who were looking for a young boy to play Albert Mondego in The Count of Monte Cristo, 2002. He went on to star in Vendetta. 2001, appear in BBC's The Inspector Lindley Mysteries, 2001, the television film Goodbye, Mr. Chips, 2002, and the television series Midsummer Murders, 1997. When Henry was 20 years old, he gained starring roles in I Captured the Castle, 2003, Hellraiser, Hellworld, 2005, Red Riding Hood, 2006, and Tristan plus Isolde. 2006. He also had a minor role in the fantasy adventure epic Stardust, 2007, alongside Sienna Miller and Ben Barnes. During 2007-2010, Henry had a leading role on the television series The Tudors, 2007, as Charles Brandon, first Duke of Suffolk. The series was a success and was nominated for a Golden Globe Award in 2007 and won an Emmy Award in 2008. Entertainment Weekly named him, Most Dashing Duke. On June 10, 2013, Man of Steel, 2013, kicked off its world premiere in New York City followed by London, Bailiwick of Jersey, Sicily, Madrid, Shanghai, Sydney and Tokyo. The movie became the highest-grossing Superman film to date, and the second-highest-grossing reboot of all time behind The Amazing Spider-Man, 2012. Glamour magazine ranked him the pound one, sexiest man. In August 2014, Henry became the ambassador for Doral Wildlife Park and created a website and social media called Pound Cavill Conservation to help raise funds and awareness for his love of animals and conservation. On November 3, 2014, it was announced that Cavill, his brother Charlie, and London-based producer Rex Glency have formed their own British production company, Promthean Productions. On August 7, 2015, the man from UNCLE, 2015, began its premiere tour with the People's Premiere at the famous Somerset House in London, followed by its world premiere in New York City, then Toronto, and Rio de Janeiro. Cavill reprised his role as Superman in Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, 2016, and Justice League, 2017. Family. Children. No children. Parents. Marianne Cavill. Dalgliesh. Colin Richard Cavill. Relatives. Major Niki Richard Dalgliesh Cavill. Sibling. Charlie Cavill. Sibling. Trademarks. Strong. Defined line Macho. Heroic. Stoic characters. Muscular physique. Deep resonant voice trivia. While working as an extra in Proof of Life, 2000, Cavill asked Russell Crowe for advice about acting, since he had aspirations of pursuing a full-time career as an actor. A few days after their conversation, he received a box of gifts from Crowe that included a signed picture of him in Gladiator, 2000, with the words, Dear Henry, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, written on it. Crow would later play Henry's father in Man of Steel, 2013. Admitted during an interview with Conan O'Brien that he narrowly missed the call from Zack Snyder, informing him that he had won the coveted role of Superman because he was busy playing World of Warcraft. Covell said he only noticed Snyder's name on collar it at the last second and by the time he put his hand on the phone to pick it up, it was too late, so he called Snyder back immediately jokingly stating he was busy, saving someone's life. He did not watch any previous Superman films or television series while making Man of Steel, 2013, using the comic solely as a reference for his portrayal of Superman. For his role as Clark Kent, 
Superman and Man of Steel, 2013. He followed a strict workout regimen and consumed 5,000 calories a day for six months. He also dyed his hair black. He once shared a story about his nephew Thomas. One day at school, the class was talking about their families, and Thomas told the class that his uncle was Superman. The teacher and the entire class didn't believe him, which led to everyone making fun of the boy. After Thomas' mother, who was the sister-in-law of Koval, was called into the school, she confirmed what her son had told the class. She later called Koval and asked him to take her son to school, and he happily agreed to do so. Quotes. With Twilight, 2008, there were all sorts of rumors going around. But, I was never sent a script, never asked to be in the film. I think Stephanie Meyer wanted me initially when she saw me in The Count of Monte Cristo, 2002. But by the time the movie went into pre-production I was too old. Batman, Batman Begins, 2005. I may have been spoken about in a room at some stage, but never auditioned or screen tested. Superman, Superman Returns, 2006, yes, that came very close. And Bond, Casino Royale, 2006, came very close as well. On understanding the importance of playing Superman, very much so, yes, it's important to do the role justice. There are a lot of people relying on me to do this well. I gladly accept that responsibility, and it's a great one to have because it's a wonderful opportunity. I don't let the pressures get to me because that's going to hinder my performance, and, therefore, let people down. So I choose to ignore the pressure side of it and focus on doing justice to Superman. On how he got his eight pack for Immortals, 2011, you can train, and train until you are blue in the face but you've got to diet. You've got to have that leanness because if you are not lean, your abs won't show. Of course, the training has to be put in, but then you've to shed all the fat and keep the fat off. And that's how you get an eight pack. On the anxiety he faced before the filming of his shirtless scenes, for Immortals, 2011, where he was required to show a perfectly ripped, eight pack, it's very stressful waking up Monday morning and saying, can I still see that vein in my abs? You get the fear every morning, do I look good enough? And of course, you do. But in your own head, you never look good enough. I had a big sense of pride. I was like, no shading. I don't want you to draw abs on me. I don't want you to put dirt in the right places. I just want to do it myself. I want to have the body. It's a pride thing. I suppose that, when I'm building a character, it's usually related to what their family is like and who their parents are, as well as how I grew up that nurture side. I suppose that, when I'm building a character, it's usually related to what their family is like and who their parents are, as well as how I grew up, that nurture side, on the, Man of Steel, version of Superman, we've given him a very human essence. As much as he's not susceptible to the frailties of the human physical body, he's very much susceptible to the frailties of the human psyche. And that is what really keeps us in touch with someone else, makes us go, I know your pain, or, yeah. I've felt that happy before. We've brought that to the character, explaining the current fascination with superheroes in the movies. It's the same thing we've always needed, which is that sense of hope. There's always something wrong in the world. It just shifts depending on the generation. And it's always nice to have that fantasy where there's someone who's going to fix everything. It's beating the odds. And that's been the same with mythological characters since the dawn of time, since we could think up gods. On the program he followed to achieve his Superman physique, it was work a lot of work. I have always loved sports and physical activities, but I have never worked out like this before. To become Clark Kent, I had to be the best friend of Mark Twight, my trainer. The program involved three stages. The first was to gain weight, mass. So I spent weeks eating nearly 5,000 calories daily while lifting extremely heavy to grow bigger. I love eating, so this stage was not difficult for me. Even though I can understand that some people end up having enough of drinking protein shakes 1,000 calories a glass. At the end of this stage, I looked like a swole bodybuilder, and I felt like I was going to explode. The second stage was to lose fat to sculpt the muscles. I had to do hours, and hours of cardio to burn all the fat. And in the last stage, we targeted specific areas of the body. Mark helped me to make my abs bulge out and my muscles more defined. The workout program was designed according to the needs of the film. The only thing I did not like is the rowing machine, a machine that simulates the movement of rowing. It is torture. On auditioning for the Superman role in Christopher Reeve's original costume, it was petrifying, mortifying and embarrassing all at the same time. I was coming off a movie where I had to be out of shape, and then I had gone through Christmas, so I was extra out of shape. I just had to throw on the Lycra-like outfit, and that never looks good when it's basically a sort of sausage casing. Entering the acting world, it's a very lonely life. You all get so close, 
and then you promise to email and text each other, but you never do. So that idea of being a sort of lone traveler I can definitely associate with on whether his abs were digitally enhanced in Man of Steel, 2013. Oh that's 100% me, believe me. And I am not afraid of saying it because I went through hell to get them, on enjoying being Superman despite the hard work it entails. I'm really enjoying it, getting my hands dirty and just immersing myself in the job. I'm just coming off of a 45-day lean because there were various shirtless scenes, and representing Superman in that physical way both efficiently and sufficiently for the fans. I'm sure you probably saw the pictures online over the past month. To lean and to train and to work 12 hours a day is taxing on the willpower and the body, but the stuff, images and footage, we're getting is fantastic. And I get to wake up every morning and say, I'm Superman. I'm not complaining. On enjoying the experience of being in shape for immortals, 2011, training to that level is difficult enough but when you're also, leaning, stripping away all fat from the body to get ripped for 10 months, it's insane. Being in that kind of shape is something everyone should do at least once. It's a great feeling, and I don't mean that in an arrogant way. You go to the gym, train hard and learn how far you can push yourself on how his appearance changed after he had trained to become Superman, the body got harder and leaner. But the biggest change was the waist getting smaller, a lot smaller. I genuinely had to throw my clothes out, since my shoulders are too big and my waist is too small. Everything just doesn't fit like it used to. I have never been this big shape, and then I had gone through Christmas, so I was extra out of shape. I just had to throw on the liker-like outfit, and that never looks good when it's basically a sort of sausage casing. Entering the acting world, it's a very lonely life. You all get so close, and then you promise to email and text each other, but you never do. So that idea of being a sort of lone traveler I can definitely associate with on whether his abs were digitally enhanced in Man of Steel, 2013. Oh that's 100% me, believe me. And I am not afraid of saying it because I went through hell to get them, on enjoying being Superman despite the hard work it entails. I'm really enjoying it, getting my hands dirty and just immersing myself in the job. I'm just coming off of a 45-day lean because there were various shirtless scenes and representing Superman in that physical way both efficiently and sufficiently for the fans. I'm sure you probably saw the pictures online over the past month. To learn and to train and to work 12 hours a day is taxing on the willpower and the body, but the stuff, images and footage we're getting is fantastic. And I get to wake up every morning and say, I'm Superman. I'm not complaining. On enjoying the experience of being in shape for immortals, 2011, training to that level is difficult enough but when you're also, leaning, stripping away all fat from the body to get ripped for 10 months, it's insane. Being in that kind of shape is something everyone should do at least once. It's a great feeling, and I don't mean that in an arrogant way. You go to the gym, train hard, and learn how far you can push yourself on how his appearance changed after he had trained to become Superman, the body got harder and leaner. But the biggest change was the waist getting smaller a lot smaller. I genuinely had to throw my clothes out, since my shoulders are too big and my waist is too small. Everything just doesn't fit like it used to. I have never been this big, on how he is able to achieve such great results in the gym, I'm incredibly strong-willed and if I decide I'm going to do something then I won't stop until it's done. I'm driven. There are points during training, where you could slow down and not beat your previous numbers, or keep going and definitely puke. There's a switch in your head where you say, sod it and you do it i never collapse after a workout you don't lie there like you are defeated you stay standing on being asked whether he looks like superman when my hair is longer i wouldn't say as much but yeah i guess there's a certain resemblance on why he maintains his buff physique even when not filming superman if i'm walking around an unhealthy mess it might damage people's idea of what superman is so there is a responsibility on being disappointed that he had to get out of shape for the cold light of day 2012 I had to get out of shape for the job in between, Immortals and Man of Steel, the cold light of day. My brief for that was, look like a regular person, you look to fit. No push-ups, no sit-ups, just eat pizza and burgers and drink beer. As everything starts to soften up, you're going, oh no, all that hard work I just wasted. I'm now in shape again. I got my muscle definition back and I plan on not losing it. I don't care what they offer me. Salaries. Black Adam, 2022. $250,000. Black Adam, 2022, $250,000 cameo. The Witcher, 2019, $400,000, Episode Season 1. The Witcher, 2019, $1,000,000, Episode Season 2. Man of Steel, 2013, 
$300,000. Blood Creek, 2009, $56,818. Whatever Works, 2009, $75,758. Stardust, 2007, $87,413. Red Riding Hood, 2007, $103,306. Tristan Plus Isolda, 2006, $126,263. Hellraiser, Hellworld, 2005, $142,045. I Capture the Castle, 2003, $162,338. Goodbye, Mr. Chips, 2003, $21,650. The Count of Monte Cristo, 2002, $284,091. Vendetta, 2001, $413,223.